Today, I'm going to be listening to Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd for the very first time ever, front to back. Let's go. It sounds like a heartbeat. I hear voices. I hear a cash machine. What the heck? I hear laughing. It's kind of unsettling. I hear screaming. Whoa. That just settled into like a very smooth feel. I think those are the chords. I feel like the way the drums are mic'd is very clean. Breathe, breathe in the air. That's nice. I like the downward sweep. It's like, breathe. That kind of a thing. Ooh, the organ came out of nowhere. So it definitely sounds like they're a good band. I think there's a lot of big groups and rock bands that don't necessarily play well together. It sounds like a big jam session, but with a lot of really cool post-production stuff put in there. For long you live and high you fly, but only if you ride the tide. And balanced on the biggest wave, you race toward an early grave. Balanced on the biggest wave. So it sounds like it's saying you can make your life as fun as you want, but you're going to head toward an early grave if you don't do that the right way. Okay, this one's called On the Run. Ooh, that hi-hat. It definitely sounds like someone's on the run in like an 80s film. Ooh. Whatever that synth is, that's cool. This sounds like Tron or something. I hear footsteps running from right to left down a hallway. Sounds like they're in dress shoes. Something big out of this ear now. The frequencies have opened up. This is really impressive that this was recorded in the 70s because this sounds like it's straight out of like a late 80s. It's like phasing through these low frequencies to these open frequencies. Whoa. Some like really low robotic. It's like overtones almost. What am I listening to? <laughs> That drummer's putting in work right now. He's probably sweating. <sighs> These like crazy helicopter sounds going right to left are, are tripping me out. Man, I feel like this would be a great act to do in Vegas at the uh, Sphere. Okay, we're on to the next song, which is called Time. And I hear clocks. I See, I like that. It's, whoa, alarm clock. Kind of overwhelming. It says this song is six minutes and 53 seconds. I don't think I could take six minutes and 53 seconds of this. <laughs> Something in my left ear is doing that. A heartbeat. Boop, boop. What's crazy is that there's all these... electronic sounds that I guess were put in during the recording process, but the band itself, when they're jamming together, sounds like a really tight band that would have played live shows and rehearsed a lot together. But then there's this whole other side of this album that's just an impressive feat of recording. So I wonder who the engineer was on this. Let me know in the comments. I hear bells. Boop, boop, boop. Mixed with some Western like guitar. Boom, 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 boom. It sounds like uh, I'm about to enter into the desert and have a, uh, a standoff. Picking away the moments that make up a dull day. Kicking around on a piece of ground in your hometown, waiting for someone or something to show you the way. Just the whole sound is very late Beatles, which I like. It sounds like the lyrics are telling the story of someone who's stuck in their small town, kind of wasting their time, maybe feeling like they're meant to do something and they're not doing it. So I like how the melody, you are young, that melody is on the major seventh note. So I think the chord is, you are young and life is long. So even though the chord underneath is a standard one, three, five chord, the singer is singing the major seven. It's cool because the melody itself is creating that major seven chord, which is awesome. Tasteful. I like how they're not afraid to mix pretty heavy electric guitar with that really clean organ in the left ear. And on the A chord, you have these ahs come in. So it's like, da, 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 ah. it's, it's just so happy feeling, which is so different than the beginning of the song with all the alarm bells and clocks and stuff. Shorter a breath, one day closer to death. 
he has grit in his voice now. Like he's angry almost. The first verse is like, you're wasting your time. Second verse is, don't worry about it. You're young. You got time to kill. And then the third verse is realizing, where did 10 years go? And he's all like, shorter of breath. It definitely is very clear that they're telling a story here. Whoa. Do they have like a gospel singer in the background? Yeah. So th they must have brought in studio musicians. Unless, are there like actual gospel singers and like choir singers in Pink Floyd? Or did they bring them into the studio to do some of this uh, background vocal stuff? Let me know in the comments. Oh, oh, oh. It's like if the Beatles had never broken up and then added a lot of like gospel singers to their music. That's what Pink Floyd sounds like to me, but also on acid. <laughs> They're doing a really good job of putting you in the scene that they want you in, which is hard to do lyrically and it's hard to do musically and they're doing it. Okay, this song's called The Great Gig in the Sky. <laughs> The slide guitar almost gives it a feel of like retreat or vacation, like you're on vacation. But then they have these weird vocals come in, like this weird speaking stuff. I'm not of dying. It's like they it's like they want you to relax, and then the, the very next moment they want you to be scared. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so that whatever gospel singer they had for the last track, they brought her back in full force. So that's interesting because they're calling this an instrumental. Man, she's killing it. She's absolutely like murdering the background vocals right now. It just sounds like they, they grew up playing together or something. Looks like they opened up the organ sound. Whoa. What was that? That was crazy. It was it was here. And then it went to this like normal, but then when it went back to the G minor, the fifth was in the bass. So instead of this, it was that note and then ba ba and then to this. That sounds like almost like baroque or something. It basically goes to a 5 one of B minor, which comes out of nowhere. We went from G minor somehow to B minor, which is just so weird. Another fading out. You know what it feels like? The name of the song is uh, The Great Gig in the Sky. It kind of feels like a big cloud slowly rolled over your head. It was a music cloud. It got louder and louder as it goes over your head and there's the climax. And now it, the cloud is slowly drifting away into the distance. Okay, this song is called Money. It starts with the uh, cash register sounds. Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum. Cool bass lick. Oh, I may, I may have heard this song before. Money, money, get away. What's the time signature on this? Five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So is this in seven, eight? Ooh, is that saxophone? I like the effect they have on the saxophone too. So I think the whole thing is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what it kind of sounds like? People keep on talking. That guitar is screaming. That tremolo on the guitar like really gives the song like a signature. What's up with all this dialogue? This one's called Us and Them. More organ. I could see U2 was probably inspired by this record. This sounds like the beginning of something off the Joshua Tree. That's nice. Am I getting that right? Ooh, what is that chord? These chord choices are inspired. That's so weird. It goes from like here to here to this. This sounds like a song you could slow dance to, but then when some of those chord changes happen, like uh, this part right here, I could see myself slow dancing and then all of a sudden this chord comes in 
And it's like, is something wrong? Are we actually in love? Are you going to kill me? Wow. Pink Floyd is so... I, I had no idea that this album was so good at doing like a, the light and dark thing, which makes sense. Like the album cover, you know, it's got that prism with the rainbow. It totally feels like you have this blackness and then the, this like rainbow of color. And they just, they go between those emotions seamlessly. Us and them, and after all, were only ordinary men. Is this about a war? Forward he cried from the rear, and the front ranks died. That's so interesting. So it, it starts out with like this slow dancing feel, and then it slowly reveals itself to be a song about <laughs> a brutal war. Black, black, and black and blue. And who knows which is which and who is who. Yeah, it sounds like they're describing the fallout from a battle or something. In the in the mass of the bodies, because they're so severely beaten, you can't tell which side they were even on. I can't believe that a song that sounds like this is about that. Haven't you heard it's a battle of words, the poster bearer cried. Listen, son, said the man with the gun, there's room for you inside. That sounds like it's pointing to propaganda. Look at the poster. Haven't you heard it's a battle of words? Come inside. Come join our side. Man, that saxophone is so nice. Man, the drummer is just really going for it. Yeah, that's a good line. With, without, and who will deny that's what the fighting's all about. Those who have and those who have not. You know, that's the history of the world. Fighting for resources. For want of the price of tea and a slice, the old man died. Maybe that's referencing a more modern incident in which some tragedy happened over the over a slice of bread i don't know maybe it could be that there's a story there that i don't that i'm not aware of if you know let me know in the comments it looks like these last few songs are kind of short so i wonder how they're going to close out the album see now i'm hearing steve miller the steve miller band i can hear that a lot of these acts that came later were absolutely inspired by pink floyd that's fun a little trill it's almost fugal. There's parts weaving in and around each other like this. Ah. That almost sounds like Jimi Hendrix. I can see why people enjoy listening to this in different settings because you can kind of take it and transport it into different experiences that you're having. This one's called Brain Damage. Kind of a happy intro for a song called Brain Damage. I feel like I had brain damage listening to this whole album in a good way. The lunatic is on the grass? The lunatic is on the grass. That kind of sounds like it's almost referencing, what, the grassy knoll? Is that what this is about? And then the next verse says the lunatic is in the hall. Is that about some other assassination or something crazy? I'll see you hmm. on the dark side. Wow, I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. The paper holds their folded faces to the floor and every day the paper boy brings more. It sounds like this is referencing news articles that are about these assassins. And if the dam breaks open many years too soon, and if there is no room upon the hill, if we're going with the grassy knoll theory, then maybe they're saying metaphorically, there's no more room left for, for all of the psychopaths to be in the same space. And if your head explodes with dark forebodings too, that would lend itself to the JFK theory that I had. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like in the comments, let me know if I'm if I'm going way off track here. Just hearing this for the first time, this feels like it's about the boiling undercurrent of madness and psychopathy that kind of spills over into public life through things like assassination. You raise the blade. You raise the blade, you make the change. You rearrange me till I'm sane. Oh, like lobotomy? You lock the door, you throw away the key. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. Yeah, it sounds like he's talking about some kind of surgery that went horribly wrong. And now there's a lunatic in his head. And if the cloud bursts thunder in your ear, you shout and no one seems to hear. And if the band you're in starts playing different tunes, I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. It almost feels like an invitation, like, hey, I'm crazy. If one day you go crazy too, you're welcome here on the dark side of the moon with me. So if you start hearing lunatics in your head and your band starts playing different tunes and you can't scream over the 
the thunder and the clouds then come join us on the dark side of the moon. It's obviously very dark and uh, cryptic, but there's like a hopefulness to it. Okay, this one's called Eclipse. D C B flat A Love that chord progression. What I love about this album is that it subverts your expectations. So I thought it was gonna go, all that you touch, all that you see, all that you taste, all that you do. But it doesn't do that. It goes, all that you touch, all that you see. And then it skips down to all that you taste, all that you feel, or something like that. that that's It just subverts your expectations of where you think the chord progression is gonna go. All that is now. I wonder if this is where YouTube got their lyrics from for the end of Walk On. All that you heal, all that you touch, all that you feel, and all that you something. It's like the very same like pattern. And everything under the sun is in tune. And everything under the sun is in tune, but the sun is eclipsed by the moon. That is so cool. And then it ends with that heartbeat again. Wow, that's crazy. That is such a cool line. And everything under the sun is in tune. So when the sun is shining, everything is harmonious and in tune. But there's a there's a twist ending because the sun isn't always shining. Sometimes it's eclipsed by the moon, which they're inviting you to join them on the dark side of the moon. That is uh, one of the best albums I've ever heard. 1973. This was made in 1973. That's like three years after Abbey Road. That is literally, I, I was not thinking this was 73. I was thinking this is late 70s. Wow. The only thing I have left to do is give it a rating. So if I had to rate it out of 10, I would give it a 10. You can't, you can't give it anything less. The musicianship is off the charts. The storytelling from top to bottom is consistent. The titles of the songs thematically match with what they're doing in the music. The lyrics are really descriptive and poetic without being pretentious. Really complex chord changes and modulations, constantly subverting your expectations. Amazing post-production work with the vocals, the background vocals, the slide guitars. Like, I don't know what studio musicians played on this record. I don't know who produced it. I don't know who the engineer was. All I know is the name of the band is Pink Floyd. Um, if you enjoyed this, I have a lot more reactions coming your way. So comment down below what album you want me to hear next. I was thinking of maybe doing um, OK Computer. I have never heard it before. I'm trying to do stuff that I've never heard and give you guys a genuine reaction. Don't forget to follow, like, and share this with people who you think might enjoy it. Bye.